Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Burney, or Mike Beer. Time for the DRF.com Formulator Race of the Day for Saturday, May the 20th. It's the second jewel in racing's Triple Crown. It's the Grade 1 Preakness for three-year-olds. Let's take a peek at this field. Our Preakness Stakes coverage is presented by ExpressBet. And folks, remember to head on over to the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com and download those free Formulator Pass performances handicap along with us as we take this field in post position order. The number one is Multiplier, Joel Rosario, Brendan Walsh. Matt, a horse that sort of defied his speed pedigree because he wants to run all day long. And Brendan Walsh has handled them that way as well. You look at it, you get the factor in a, a mare by trip. You would imagine he wants to go six furlongs. Instead, this horse seems like he just wants to go all day. I may have underestimated him going into the Illinois Derby. I thought he was just a bit of a grinder. And I thought he went and got a decent enough horse in Hedge Fund. And we'll see Hedge Fund Mike Beer earlier on in the Preakness yeah. card. He'll probably go off the favorite in the Sir Barton Stakes. Multiplier earned a fast buyer speed figure. He got a very nice ride from James Graham. Yeah. Can you make the case that he's going to be sort of the looking at Lee in this year's race, sort of an under the radar closer that can clunk up and get a piece at the very least. I, I think it can. Um, it's not going to be easy for him to win this race, but there's a lot of upside with this horse, and I liked his. I liked his last race just fine. I think you're right. He got a good trip, saving ground. But as you said, he came and got that horse uh, on the lead in that race. I like the way that he finished it up. Um, he's there are two big sort of new shooters with upside. They're drawn right next to each other in this race. I wouldn't be so surprised to find out that this horse turns out to be just as good as the other one. One of the new shooters in here, new shooters have not done well recently in the Preakness, but one of the well-fancied new shooters is the number two cloud computing for trainer Chad Brown, Mike, from your neck of the woods. You're the Naira yeah. analyst for DRF.com. I thought he ran really well in the Gotham. What happened in the wood? Um, I guess if you want to say he didn't break that sharply from the gate in that race, um, it is worth remembering that Wood Day was a big speed day. And I guess once he got up to that start, maybe he compromised his own chances a little bit in that race. I personally didn't think that he ran that great. Um, but I get the excuses for him. Only three starts, top trainer. They're being very confident with this horse. They've liked him from day one. I get all that. I also feel like he takes a ton of money in this race. And... You know, we'll see what happens going forward. I hate the Wood as a race. I don't like anybody coming out of that race. Um, we obviously saw Irish War cry. Not that this, you know, it's an apples to apples kind of thing, but he was terrible in the Derby. I don't like the Wood as a race, and I don't want this horse out of it. Really nice inside post position. Great jockey and Hall of Famer Javier Castellano. I think Cloud Computing works out a nice trip, and you can make the argument that of the horses in this race, he has the greatest upside. Well, we haven't really seen him all that often. We've only seen him three times. This is a very, let's say, confident move to run a horse like this, especially off of, I mean, again, people could make the case that his past two races haven't been that good. I want to be a little bit kinder and say, you know what, he did break a step slow. If you believe speed and you believe inside was good on Wood Day, he really had neither one of those in his favor, and he did. He just kind of chugged along at the end. And with the Gotham, you could make the case that he was close enough to a relatively hot right. pace that kind of melted down. He made the first move into it. And then, okay, he got run down by Jay Boy Zecco, who just had everything go his way. Uh, I can also understand anyone that just says, you know what, this is a lot to ask, and he's going to need to step up in a big, big way. The number three is Hence Matt, who earned a fast buyer speed figure in winning the Grade 3 Sunland Derby two starts back a race where the pace was extremely fast. It might have fallen apart for Hence. Can you just make the argument in the Kentucky Derby? All right, wet track, didn't have the cleanest trip. He can rebound? Uh, I, look, to me, in many ways, he's sort of an unknown in here because he was a bit of the wise guy horse going into the Derby, and you hear Steve Asmussen afterwards say, you know what, he just, it wasn't a matter of him not handling the track, it's just he didn't like the things being kicked in his face with the kickback and the slop. If you draw a line through the Sunland Derby, he is painfully slow. <laughs> right. If you believe the Sunland Derby, he's got a big chance if he gets pace. A lot of folks thought the Sunland Derby, what a live race. A lot right. of horses coming out of the Sunland Derby to run well. Your thoughts on Hence's Kentucky Derby? Um, I will say this about his Kentucky Derby. He was one of the few horses in there who just, I thought, had a miserable trip in that race. He got bounced around at the start. He was way back off the pace. Couldn't even get a run going through the second turn. Stuck behind horses. I would just throw that race out. So I guess you have to look at him and say, was the Sunland Derby his coming out party? Because if it was, he ran a 97. If that, that's the race he's going to be building off of the Preakness, I guess he's a contender. I don't personally like him that much, but I understand looking at him that way. Always dreaming the number four. Here's the horse everyone's coming out to see. The four to five morning line favorite, the winner of the Kentucky Derby for trainer Todd Pletcher. He received a beautiful ride by John Velasquez over a wet track in the Kentucky Derby. Boy, he ran. He ran. He ran every step of the way. I, it was one of those, it was just a satisfying result for me. We've seen derbies in the past where I look at it and go, Eh, I'm not sure that, you know, that really, yeah, things work out for you. This horse ran every step of the way. Got a great ride from Johnny V. 
the wet track, I don't really care. I mean, look, it's just nice to know that he can handle it if for yeah. some reason it ever showed up. I, I mean, he is strictly the horse to beat in here. I guess the main negative, if you want to call it a negative, or perhaps just handicappers during the Triple Crown season, overemphasize things like yeah. trainer statistics. Todd Fletcher usually does not wheel his horses back on such short notice. Is that a reason to try to beat Always Dreaming as an odds-on favorite? No, I think it's totally overblown. Um, I wouldn't even worry about it. Um, it, I, that's, I guess the question with, with always dreaming, Justice, I think you want to sort of look at his derby and say, I agree with Matt, I don't think he's a wet track move up at all, but he got right up there on the pace with a horse who was just totally overmatched. Um, it felt like that was a race, that there wasn't any closing going on, and so maybe he just had all the best of it in that race, I don't know. I personally think he's really good, and I like the way that Pletcher's handled them this year, and I like his last two races a lot, and I think it sort of stamps him as the best three-year-old in the country right now, and somebody better run big to beat him on Saturday. Right next door to the Derby winner is last year's two-year-old champion, the number five classic empire, who has had a start and stop campaign, a very frustrating campaign yeah. for Mark Cassie, even though he did win an important Kentucky Derby prep, the Arkansas Derby. This horse had some trouble in the Kentucky Derby, Matt. Can you make the argument that now he's had two races and that he is really going to be fit and primed for the Preakness? I think you could make the case that the Arkansas Derby was a tightener. He got really tight last time out, and I understand it was a matter of the trip and whatnot that didn't work out for him, but I, I think you can make the case that he may have even been a little bit short going into the Kentucky Derby just based on the way his three-year-old campaign sure. has been mapped out. Now you know he's going to be tight. There's no excuse. That, that can't be used as an excuse. Right. The concern now is I still look at it and say, I know he had a bad trip. Draw a line through the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Where's the race on his page that makes him so much better, or at least on par right now with Always Dreaming? I get why people are going to go toward him. Uh, he's just kind of uninteresting to me. What kind of trip is he going to pull under Julian Leperu? We saw in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile that this horse does have the speed yeah. to be close to the pace. Well, later on, we'll look at the time form U.S. pace projector. We know Always Dreaming's fast. We know Conquest Mo Money is fast. Where will Classic Empire be? He is versatile enough that there are options. Yeah, I, I think Leper has got to go with always dreaming in this race and, and try and keep right up in his hip pocket in this race and just, you know what, turn it into a horse race and see if you're good enough to do it. He has the 102 buyer. Listen, always dreaming has got the 102 for the Derby. This horse is as fast as always dreaming um, off of that race last year as a two-year-old. I think the real problem with him is He's run three times now as a three-year-old. None of them, to me, are particularly compelling performances. He's run an 87, a 94, and a 90 as a three-year-old. Is he going to break through now and start you know, to show the horse that everybody thought he could be, or is he not? I don't want him as the second choice. I think he's going to take a ton of money in this race. And I know he had trouble in the Derby at the start, and it, compromised, it certainly compromised him. I didn't think he ran that great in that race. Is Gunavera being sort of unfairly being sort of forgotten about a little bit? He's the forgotten horse and he shouldn't be because we know he can run fast races as we saw in the Fountain of Youth three starts back, a 97 buyer speed figure. He had no chance from that outside post position in the Florida Derby and maybe he just didn't like the wet track at Churchill. I, you know, I, I think he is and having said that, I don't want him in here, but I, I, I don't think he's getting the credit he deserves. When he's right, we know this horse is capable of running with the best that we have as far as the three-year-olds at this time year are concerned the bigger issue for me is the race shape of this race and it just I wonder if he's going the wrong way did he right. did we try to get too much out of him in, in too short amount of time keep in mind he's getting going up on his 11th lifetime start he raced so many times as a two-year-old I like him I think there's talent here I just don't know if Saturday's the day is he the best closer in the race mm, that's a good question maybe he is I think looking at Lee's a pretty good closer yeah. too but I think it's close between them but Gunnar is certainly one of the best closers in the race I want to be more forgiving um, of him than Matt is but I understand that position as well um, he's the other horse I want to use in the race. I'm using Always Dream and I'm using this horse, if only because I think it'll be a price and I can make excuses for his last two races. Um, a wet track in the Derby that, again, there was, there's just no closing going on. I think it worked against his style. He had no chance in the Florida Derby. The two races before that, I think, give him a chance in this race. Always Dreaming is going. Conquest Mo Money probably going. If Classic Empire goes with Always Dreaming and we get a little bit of a horse race up front, this horse is going to come running at the end. I think he can pull off an upset here. Trainer Doug O'Neill won the Preakness a few years ago with I'll Have Another. He has a new shooter in this year's Preakness with the number seven term of art who might end up being the longest shot on the tote yeah. board, but he does have a positive formulator fact in his corner. Over the past four years with three-year-old dirt routers off a short layup and the key move adding blinkers, 30% to $2.58 return on investment. Matt, I would feel a lot better about that statistic <laughs> if term of art 
hadn't already raced with blinkers, yeah. most recently the sham where he was beaten a country mile by Gormley. Before the Santa Anita Derby, I said, if this horse can get into the Kentucky Derby, he looks like the kind that will maybe be the one that can clunk up and get a piece yeah. in a big, big number. Well, he was awful in the Santa Anita Derby, and now the Santa Anita Derby is quickly becoming sort of one of those races that I don't know what you want to do with because Battle of Midway ran so well, Gormley ran so poorly, American Anthem comes back and right. wins. So you get a lot of mixed things coming out of it. I think this horse wants to run all day. I just don't know how fast he is. Mike Beer, does he have a shot? No. All right. Term of art. <laughs> Big price in the Preakness. The number eight senior investment. Mike, we'll talk about him because he came from off of it to win the grade three Lexington on April the 15th. I'm not sure that was the strongest Lexington yeah. in the world. I think that West Coast for Bob Baffert's an okay horse. Yeah. No right. dozing is an okay horse. But senior investment is really have to step up in class. Yeah, he's just, he's not fast enough right now to win this race. And he's probably going to be trying to close at the end. And I don't know that he's the best closer in the race either. I do like the way that he's headed. I liked his Lexington just fine. I thought he ran well that day. But if he runs the Lexington, he's not winning the Preakness. His progression, he continues to get better. The problem is he's still so much slower than the main contenders. Looking at Lee is the number nine. Boy, what a ride he got. I mean, yeah. the only person that could have given looking at Lee <laughs> a ride better than Corey Lannery was Calvin Burrell, because right. that was the Calvin Burrell yes. ride, and that is what Corey does. He's able to save ground. Looking at Lee did not have a straw in his path. Right. Corey gave him every chance to win. I think that's the absolute best that looking at Lee can run. Yeah, I thought it was Burrell, right? And I'm surprised to find out that it was Lannery. Um, you're right. Last time was the time to try to get him in there at a price. Saturday's not the time. I, maybe I'm in the minority He's now. getting better. This horse has yet to take a step backwards. I'm not going to just assume that he's going to take a step backwards this time around. You're right. He had everything go his way. The trip, the pace, the wet track, whatever it may have been. He had it all go his way. I don't think he's a, a likely win candidate, but if you're playing an exacta or a trifecta or a superfecta and you just throw him out because you think last time was the time, I think you're making a major mistake because we're not talking about a horse that's going to be 4-1. to one. We're talking about a 10 or 12-1 to one shot. Slow up the time form U.S. pace projector for this year's Preakness Stakes. The horse on the outside has got big, big speed, and that is the number 10, Conquest Mo Money. And as we take a look at the pace projector, Conquest Mo Money looks like he can get to the front, and as you see by that blue bar, favors horse on or near the early lead. Something tells me that the Derby winner will have something to say about that pace projector. Um, even if he does make the lead, it doesn't favor the horse who's on the lead because the horses sitting second and third to this horse are a lot better than him. Um, I don't get, I just, I know he may make the front in this race. I don't get him at all. I don't see how he's close to good enough to win this race. I'm a little bit more bullish on his chances. I think he's a very talented horse. I think he's been managed very well by his connections. Is he as good as always dreaming in classic empire? Probably as as not right now. Is he? I think he's. I think he, he ran a much better race he than did? Hence, I thought, in the Sunland Derby. I thought he ran wow, well that day. I don't know. I think he's a really nice source. I think he has a lot of upside. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a nice check in here. I'm stunned at the amount of people I'm seeing that love this horse as opposed to cloud computing. I just, I, I understand Conquest Mo Money. I get the idea that you're going to go. But boy, isn't he in a, in a darned if you do, darned if you don't position? Uh, if you want to win the race, you got to try to clear. And guess what? You're not as good as the other horses, yeah. in my opinion. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. Yeah, isn't the trip that you want maybe the trip that Cloud Computing's going to get? Yes, yeah, sort of the, behind. Behind. I don't think you yes. want to be out there on the front with always dreaming coming after you. I think that's a really tough position to be in. Let's take a look at our top selections for this year's Preakness Stakes. Mike, you and I, we'd, we'd like to get clever, but we just think that always dreaming's the most likely winner, that we'll get a similar close to the pace trip as he did in the yeah. Kentucky Derby. He is way the horse to beat. Matt's being a little bit more adventurous with the 12 to 1 morning line on cloud computing. You're getting Javier, you're getting Chad, and he probably does get a nice trip in behind uh, three horses. And it's acknowledging that, I mean, always dreaming is way the horse to beat. Nobody's going to deny that, but yeah. I just feel like this horse, Chad has always handled him like he's very, very talented. Like, who knows what this horse could end up being. Sounds like he's training up to this very well. And you guys brought up an interesting other little tidbit. If Classic Empire is sent out of there, and all of a sudden it's a three-ply duel on I the front. I think that's the plan. And this horse sits just in behind and says, you know what, let them kind of wear yeah. each other out. Let me take a shot. Whether he's good enough or not, we'll find out. There's going to be a number. And he got experience with that kind of trip yeah. in the Gotham, where he ran yeah. really, really well up close, but in behind horses, in horses, in behind or getting some dirt yeah. kicked in his face. Grade 1 Preakness on Saturday at Old Hilltop Pimlico. Approximate post time is 6.48 Eastern, and our Coverage presented by ExpressBet. Best of luck.